Hello everyone, and welcome to another Warclad tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make laces. These laces will be made out of linen thread. Some of the finer examples were made out of silk, but linen thread is a perfectly good thing to use. It's affordable, most people would have it. As you can see, we have all the tools and materials we'll be using laid out before us, with the exception of the die. Uh, the only tool that we'll really need are these small scissors used for cutting the thread. We also have aglets made out of brass, which will be used to finish off the threads, protect the ends, and make them easier to lace through uh, the eyelets of whatever you're lacing up. And we also have a material called code, which is also known as shoemaker's wax. It's made out of pine pitch, rosin, and beeswax. Uh, I might show you how to make that at a future date. Same with the aglets. But, now that we have everything assembled, why don't we go ahead and get this process started. To start things off, we have a length of thread. Now, you'll want to do this on the edge of a table because you're going to be winding your loops over and under the surface. I have the edge of my linen taped down on the edge of the table, although you can do it on top. And you're going to take it and start winding it out, bring it to the edge of the table, take a length, and work it under. This is how you're going to make your loops of thread. We have one loop down, and we're starting our second. And for this thread that I'm making today, we're going to want to do this seven times. For the technique I'm using, you could also do it five times if you wanted a thinner bit of lace. But since we're using this for armoring purposes, we're going to want it to be very strong. Once you've made your seventh loop, you'll want to pass under one more time to bring things back around to where we started. At this point, we're using the other tools. Keep this nice and together. Take your end, and we want to tie them together without getting too much slack in the line. Take that excess. Trim a little bit of it off. Now, at this stage, if you don't need to worry about dyeing, you can go ahead and tie on your loop for working these. But in our case, we're going to be doing a bit of dyeing. So, you'll want to take some thread and right under where the knot is, you're going to want to gather everything up and tie a knot into this. As I said before, if your thread is already dyed, you can go ahead and put your working loop on this. But if you're going to dye things up, this will help keep your thread together. Voila, nice and tight. You don't want it too tight, just tight enough to hold everything together. You can see, we've now bundled everything up. So 
carefully work your thread off of wherever you have wound it up. We now have seven lovely loops of linen thread all wound together. Now, if you're going to dye things up, you'll want to tie off at a few different points because during the dyeing process, it's very easy for things to get knotted up. So, we'll start that process and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Back in a snap. We've now dyed everything up. I know that went by real fast, right? Unfortunately, in the real world, that takes about a day. But, as you can see, it's a lovely shade of red. Now, I did learn a little something working on this. I tied things a little too tight, so we have some areas, like right here, where you can see that the dye didn't quite take. That's because I had things tied down a little too tight, and the thread on the outside got dyed, and the thread underneath did not. But, now that we have this, go ahead and cut out all of your little tie-on points, such as on the end here. I still have one left. Leaving these on the end here, this is where the knot is, and that area is very important. You don't want to mess with that, and you want to be careful not to cut any of your other threads. But, we'll go ahead and get that off, and I'll show you how to make the loop that you'll use to get everything nice and set up so you can start looping and braiding. I've made an easy little knot at the end of everything where they're all tied together to make a loop. Now this will allow me to hook over the end of something like, uh, in my case, a hammer handle held in a vise, but you can easily use a table leg or a chair leg, anything nice and sturdy that can take you pulling on it without pulling over or coming loose because we're going to need these loops to be nice and taut for braiding. So let me go ahead and get everything set up, and then we'll get to the hard part. This part is fun as it's a bit of a workout. Now to get everything kicked off, I ran the code over the edge of the threads to get them nice and coated. It forms sort of a protective layer and also helps them stick together. Now, we're going to take these loops and one by one loop them over our fingers. We're going to do four on one side, three on the other. And you can also do this with three on one hand and two on the other. But as I said before, we want to make this nice and sturdy. So those extra two loops will make things much stronger. You might hear me pulling some threads apart. That's because the code has caused things to stick together a bit. As you can see, I now have my fingers all looped up. Now, you take this index finger, go under, 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 and hook the leading edge, get it on this finger, pull off, and pull everything down. And then, You'll use your fingers to walk these loops back and free up your opposite of the next finger. And you'll repeat again with the other hand. The more you do this, the faster you'll get, and it'll start becoming like second nature. It'll be a bit awkward at first, but over time, as you work on things, they'll get tighter and more in place, and it'll all start coming together. So I'll see you in a few hours. This is going to be a bit of a workout. Your arms are going to be very tired. 
but stick with it and you'll have something awesome. See you when this is done. Well, we finished all of our braiding and as you can see, we have a lovely piece of lace. Now, this is technically usable as is, but at this stage, we're going to attach the aglets. Now this is going to require a little bit of glue. So we're gonna go ahead and heat that up and then use it to start attaching things. And then we're going to stitch these into place. We've now melted our hide glue. So it's ready for use. And we've trimmed the ends so they're nice and even. And now all you have to do is take the last few inches of the lace, get a bit of high glue, and paint it on. You want to get a nice liberal amount. I'm going to take this off screen for just a moment because I don't want to drip glue all over my table. Now, I'll take an aglet and gently try to get this in the side. Now, I can take an awl, I have a little bit coming through here on the edge, but I can push this further inside the aglet. If I can, I'll get all the glue bits inside, like so. If you get a little on your fingers, just dip them in the water. The water should be warm. Wipe them off. And you can see, it's now inside. So now I'll prepare a little thread. We'll stitch things on and we'll have some finished laces. All right, so at this point, I will take a needle, pass it through the hole, and start stitching such that everything will remain perfectly attached. Pass it through the top. Honestly, I should have pulled that further through, but Fingers are still a little bit sticky from the glue. That shouldn't be too big a problem. Just pull that through. Repeat that a few times. Instead of stitching, you can also rivet into place with a bronze rivet. and you'll get a similar result. There's also evidence that people at times just crimp these up to the 1500s. This is a bit of a later method. To finish off, just pierce and go through a few times, moving up the lace, and that'll hold things in place without much trouble. Get our scissors, cut it off, excess. Well, here it is, the finished lace. As you can see, we have the aglets attached at both ends. All that's left now is to go ahead and grab the cuffs and 
get it attached. Obviously, we'll have to make a, another one, but now that we know how, it should be pretty easy. And here we have it, the tutorial finished at last. Leather cuffs and authentic medieval style laces. These can be used to make arming points to attach your armor to your arming clothes. Uh, you can also use them as drawstrings on purses and pouches and as general cordage. They also work well for lacing up your clothing in your medieval impressions. And now you know how to make them for yourselves. So thank you for joining me on another tutorial. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. It's thanks to you that I'm able to make videos like this and can keep making them in the future. If you like videos like this, please consider supporting me there. And if you like the things I make, feel free to check out my shop on Etsy and follow me on my various social media accounts. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell so you'll be notified for future tutorials and other videos. So until next time, stay safe and happy crafting.